Hey everybody, I'm Derek Brown, and this is Beatbox Saxophone, where every Tuesday I'm going to be releasing a video where I talk about how to get some of these beatbox saxophone sounds that I use, some of these percussive effects, extended techniques, tips and tricks, all that good stuff. Um, that I use. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to check out uh, my recently uh, released music video um, where I'm using a lot of these things. Uh, there should be a link uh, right about there that you can check out and come on back. And once again, Tutorial Tuesdays. Every Tuesday I'm gonna release something where I'm gonna go really in-depthly into each technique on how I use this. Today I just wanna present a general overview of some of this stuff to kind of give you a preview of what I'm gonna be doing. And just to show you just some very basics to get you started and then we'll go way more in depth in the future. Um, a lot of you may uh, know of the uh, beatboxing flute extraordinaire uh, Greg Patillo uh, who's just an incredible musician. I really encourage you to check out his stuff uh, and his stuff with Project Trio. Uh, he was one of the guys that was really paving the way uh, for uh, doing this beatbox technique with a wind instrument uh, like the flute. Now the saxophone's quite a bit different. Uh, the number one reason being we have this big thing jammed in our mouth, uh, which means we can't do the traditional beatbox kind of effects and sounds uh, with our mouth. Secondly, uh, most of our sound comes out of the bell and this general area. And so if we're doing anything off to the side, which I do a, a little bit of that and we might talk about that in the future. It's not gonna be really picked up because if you have a mic here and it's just, you get a lot of sound coming out of here and this will get lost. So anything you're doing up here has to be going through the horn and used as the bell, which can be a bonus because we have this amplifier, basically this big tube that'll help make it louder. Um, so that's one of the key differences. Uh, so a lot of these effects aren't uh, aren't as simple as just making the sound in your mouth. You have to find out some way uh, to do it through the saxophone. So that brings me to the three uh, basic sounds uh, that we're going to start with. Um, Greg Patillo and his uh, flute beatboxing 101, he talks about having uh, three basic sounds of kind of like a bass drum, kind of a snare, and kind of a hi-hat sound, uh, which is mimicking, obviously, the drum set. Uh, it's similar on the sax, but they're different techniques. Uh, first of all, for getting that bass sound, I'm mainly doing uh, a technique called slap tonguing. Also, tongue ramming, which is a little bit different and I'll talk about, and that allows me to play faster. Uh, but the slap tonguing uh, is basically taking your tongue, creating a suction with the reed, yanking it down while puffing air through and it makes this slap tone. It sounds like this, if I think some low notes. And you can go up all the way up the horn. I'm mainly gonna be sticking to the low notes uh, to get that Once again, I'll be mixing that with this idea called tongue ramming that allows me to do this. But we'll get to that in the future. Okay, the snare sound, uh, I call it a saxophone, I just call it a pop. And I'm just doing And that's basically just creating some tension in, uh, in your mouth and then releasing it with a ton of air. Doesn't matter what note you're fingering. Doesn't really change it too much. That gives me that, that back beat that's really important for establishing a root. And then the hi-hat sound, this one's pretty easy. I'm just doing a just like you're tonguing, um, but not giving it quite enough support to make an actual sound. Uh, I'll talk about ideal fingerings that you can use to get the maximum volume in the future, um, but it's just this. Also notice that it helps, the more fingers you do put down, that allows that air and the sound to all be coming out of the bell instead of just kind of spread out. You're gonna have all your fingers down. So you put those three together and you just can create a basic beat like this. And of 
course, you can change it up, add some syncopation. You can add some upper notes. We're not only going to be talking about those three tones. Uh, there's a lot of other effects that we can do because this... This, this horn can do a lot of surprising things. Um, things like uh, getting DJ scratch sounds. Or just air puffs. Uh, things like multiphonics. tonguing but using it as pitchless with pitchless tones get kind of a roll so lots of things coming up ahead I'm excited to share these with you uh, once again check out my music video that I made I use a lot of these techniques uh, in one song and I'll be releasing a few more of these uh, hopefully in the future and please feel free to uh, shoot me an email, uh, respond uh, under the videos with any questions you have. Hopefully I can, I can get to them all. I encourage you to check out my website, which is www.derekbrownsax.com, uh, where I have a blog uh, that I'm updating about my experiences here in Chicago and some of the other projects I'm working on. Uh, and uh, definitely subscribe to this YouTube video uh, if you're interested in learning some of these techniques. Once again, Tutorial Tuesdays. Every Tuesday, we're going to go over a new technique. Uh, so hit the subscribe button, and you'll be updated on all that stuff. And in the meantime, happy practicing.